Recently, I launched a video showcasing a software I've written that helps test shields in Elite Dangerous to try and determine what the potentially strongest shield is in various situations. You guys have given me a ton of feedback, like ideas for new features, you've helped solve bugs. So based on all that, I've implemented some new stuff into the program. I've changed up some of the tests and it's come out with a result that has completely flipped everything on the head for me regarding how I thought we we're going to fit shields in Elite Dangerous. The D2 Emerge store is open. There are t-shirts, sweaters, hoodies, mugs and tote bags with many cool designs. Head down to the link in the video description and get yourself your merchandise today. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. I continue my little series here talking about SHIELD and especially the SHIELD uh, software. I promise you guys a deep dive video that is going to come. Today is just a follow up on the last video because there's been some rather significant changes both in terms of the results but there's also been some stuff added to the program. First I just quickly want to walk you over the, the changes that I've done. And then towards the, uh, the end of the video, we're going to look into the new results that I got, um, which is quite surprising and definitely something I'm going to be trying out in game. After we extract the latest version of the program, we can see here there is a new folder here called Python port. This is courteous of Thorian, I think his name is, um, over on GitHub, who has ported the program to Python. It's been ported to many other languages already, but that's been made a Python port. so. If you prefer that, I think it's a little faster and he also laid a UI. Um, I'm not really maintaining the Python port, uh, so as new features are added, they might not be the Python version, but I'll try to, uh, to pull in as changes I make to that version as well to try and keep, uh, keep that up to date. There's also been a, a series of bugs that has been uh, fixed. The first one was actually also discovered by, by Turin, the same guy who's done the, uh, the Python port, where there was a small miscalculation in the regen rate on the shield generators. Nothing that really prompted a, a redo of any of the tests. I tried it out and it almost gave the same results, like with minute changes here and there. But overall, it was pretty close to the same. However, another guy over on GitHub called Freaky has also discovered another bug that's a little bit more severe and that was I had a off by one error meaning that in some places I would reference by ID in some places I would reference by um, by number in a list and because the ID starts at one and the list number starts at zero it basically means the effect was that the last shield booster in the list would never actually be tested. And you can see here, if we just quickly open up the list, that the last one in the list is augmented supercapacitor. So that explains why that never showed up in my test before, because I would only test from one to 11, I never actually included number 12. That of course was a severe enough mistake that that I feel like I had to do an update video, which is why we're having this today to show you some of the new results. And of course that has been, uh, been fixed, but there's also been some, um, some new features added to uh, to the program. First of all, if we open up the folder, you will see there's now a file, a bat file here called start tests. Some of you guys had issues when you started the program, the window, like the terminal prompt would open or would close immediately as soon as it was done. So you couldn't really see the results of your test. So I made this bat file and all it really does is it just starts the program and then it pauses when it's done, meaning it keep it open so you can see the results. So you can now just double click on that and it's going to run your test based on the uh, on the shield test um, configuration. So you can see here now that the test is done, the window is kept open and it says press any key to continue. So you now have a, a nice chance to sit and um, and see the results. If you by accident click something, you can see here I've also like made a logs folder. In the logs folder, we will also now have let's get the latest one. It will now have a create a transcript of everything that happened. So. You can always go back and see what uh, your results were for the given tests. I've also implemented a small test setup block here uh, before the result, so you can see what your config file looked like uh, before the test was started, making it a little easier so you don't have to sit and remember oh, which order did I run the tests in or something like that. It's just shown in here. And the eagle light of you will have noticed that there are two new configurations. There's a shield cell bank hit point pool, and there's a guardian shield reinforcement hit point pool. That was some of the features that you guys have been asking a lot for in the comment section. A lot of you ask, how does shield cell banks, how does guardian shield reinforcement affect the results? 
And that's why I've added those two into the program and those are now been, now been taken into consideration as well. And that is also, of course, what we will be testing in the results I'm going to show you here in a little bit, how these affect the outcome of, uh, of the final build. One of the other critique points that some of you guys had was that the stats that we were testing with was pretty much just something that I kind of guessed at. Um, while the DPS is still really difficult to measure, I figured that at least the damage efficiency, so how much of the time we're being shot at, that is something I can measure. So what I did here, this is my editing, video editing program, is I went out and I went into a conflict zone, a high intensity conflict zone in my cucumber, and I flew around there for like 20 minutes and killed NPCs, recorded it all, and then I sat here and I cut the video up into two tracks, one track up here where I'm not getting shot, and one track down here where I am getting shot. And I could then measure the length of the video where I was getting shot compared to the length of the video where I was not getting shot. And it turned out that I ended up at around 65% uh, of the time I was being shot at and the remaining of the 35% I was not being shot at. So for all the tests I'll be running from here on in, today at least, I'll be using 65% as damage efficiency because that's what I got from that particular run. The first test I want to show you is something that's very similar to something we ran last time. Here I have um, I have seven uh, shield boosters. I run seven in all my cases today because it's really rare I think it would fit eight. You would probably always want one utility for something else. So I'm just going to be fitting uh, always with seven in all of my tests today. And I will always be using a damage efficiency of 65%. I will only be changing out the shields and bank hit points, the guardian hit points, and the damage percentages. And the first one we're just going to look at today here is just the 50-50 on thermal kinetic with seven shield boosters and a damage efficiency of 65%. And we can see this, the build here it comes up with, and it is pretty similar to what I would consider the meta today, which is at least one of them where you go reinforced, sorry, not reinforced, you go a prismatic reinforced high cap. And then you go three resistance augmented. And now we can see that super capacitor, resistance augmented super capacitor does show up together with a thermal block. This is very similar to the results we saw last time. Um, of course, that super capacitor didn't show up last time, but it got a thermal block instead. So we got something very similar to the results from, uh, from the last video. However, one of the things that you also mentioned in the comment section was what about plasma accelerators they do absolute damage you're not compensating for that extra absolute damage you will get from um, from that so i thought okay let's try to uh, to add a little bit of absolute damage so i just added 10 absolute damage to kind of simulate that some npcs from time to time might land a hit with a pa and pa has i think it's a 60 40 split on uh, on thermal and absolute damage so you can get a little bit of absolute damage if you get hit by that so just added a little bit to see how it would change up the build it didn't do a whole lot. We're still going prismatic reinforced high cap, as you can see here. Um, it drops one of the resistance augmented and put that over at heavy duty. I think, again, now that we have a little bit absolute, it that ignores resistance. So it goes a little bit less into resistance and more into hit points. Um, but it still tries to keep that thermal resistance up by having... Um, by having two thermal block uh, resistance augmented and then a single thermal block on one of the heavy duties. Um, but the interesting part, of course, now comes when we begin to add the shield cell banks and the shield reinforcement. So what I did here was I went over to the cucumber build that I have, the, my PVE Corvette. And I saw, okay, so with the loadout I have, I have two, I think it's 7B, if I recall correctly. I think it's 7B um, shield cell bank with specialized boss shell. Two of those, I think they have six shells east with 611 hit points per charge, if I recall correctly. So I added all that up and I looked at how many Guardian Shield Enforcement Packs I had, added up all the hit points from those. And then I plugged that in and I got up and ended up with having a total from all my Shield Cell Banks. If I have two of those fitted, I have 12 charges of 611 each. I ended up at 7,332 hit points I can gain from Shield Cell Banks. And I had a total of 827 hit points from my Guardian Shield Enforcement Packs. And again, I kept the, res the same damage output as in the previous test and still the damage efficiency of 65%. And here comes the really, really interesting result. Look at that. So here's what it does. It, it goes prismatic thermal, thermal resistant force block, and then it fits all resistance augmented, most of them with thermal block and one sorry, force block and one with thermal block. This is interesting because in my mind, I've always kind of seen two main ways you could go about with your shields. Either you go prismatics and you do a hit point tank where you go high on your hit points 
you utilize the many hit points you gain from that and and you try to boost those hit points to get out of the shield uh, generator by just adding a lot of modifier to the shield hit point over on the shield booster side by going with a lot of heavy duties the other way of course is going with a more recharge focus build which i have been liking to use in the past where you would go with by weaves and then say okay we want to try and get as much power out of that recharge as possible so we benefit from a high resistance because it makes our recharge more valuable the effective hit point recharge is higher if you have high resistance so i would always like look at it and like okay we have two options we have prismatics with high hit points and low resistance or you can go with a bi weave with uh, lower hit points but a high regen rate uh, and then also high resistance to make the recharge as efficient as possible but because we've taken shield cell bank into the into the pool here, what it does is it says, forget about the regen rate of the shield because we're being shot at 65% of the time. That means we have a 65% penalty to a regen rate. So you say, forget about it. Don't don't worry about your, your, your hit point regen, your natural regen of your shield. Your regen comes from your shield cell banks. And then what it does says, okay, so we don't care about a regen. So let's just put on a, a prismatic um, shield just to get as many hit points as we can out of our shield generator and then just spec heavy for resistance to make those shield cell banks as efficient as possible i mean i'm ending up at what 2400 hit points total um, this is with guardian shield enforcement packs included so just 2400 hit points and every time i fire off a shield cell bank it's 611 that's like 25 percent ish pretty close actually to 25% of my total shield that's being recharged every time I fire off a shield cell bank. And that's a lot. That's a lot of shield you get back in a very short amount of time. And because our resistances are so high, I mean, look at that. Look at those resistances. Most of them are up close to 70. And even over, it's only kinetic that's just slightly under at 68.8 uh, and if we changed out that one thermal block there i'm a little unsure why that shows up if we change that one out for another force block i think we can push that up over um over the 69 percent i'm not sure how close 70 percent but at least over 69 i think that's some really high resistance that means the amount of damage they have to do to our shield to mitigate those hit points generated by the shield cell bank is a lot that means we can tank a lot with one shield cell bank and that's kind of the meta. Of course, a build like that have a downside of shield cell banks generating a lot of heat. So we have to be able to mitigate that heat somewhere. And that would most likely have to be something we will have to do through um, thermal vent beam lasers or something along those lines. At least this is something I'm going to try. I'm going to try to see if we can make a build where our recharge come purely from shield cell banks. And then we just spec heavy into resistance and we'd only use prismatic just to give us enough of a hit point pool that we don't have to sit and fire off shield cell banks all the time that we can actually relax a little bit and we have a bit of a hit point pool the latest version of the software is of course available in the description below where you can go and download it off github or if you are more proficient you can of course just clone it and do a pull and i am still very open for you guys to give me feedback i know a lot of you guys have been talking about capacitor and pip management and all that stuff and of course in all these tests i'm assuming your pip management will be the same regardless of which shield you're fitting and i'm also assuming you have a power distributor that can supply enough power that you can keep your shield fed and running at all times um but it is something that we might be able to look into in uh, in the future to add but i'm still very open for feature requests or changes i change ideas or if you spot box let me know this is going to be hopefully an ongoing project that i'm going to be running here over the, over the foreseeable future we're going to keep trying to refine it and make it uh, make it better and better and better so if you want to keep yourself updated with the latest findings in how to build strong shields in elite dangerous you should go down and hit the subscribe button i'll be doing some live streams where we're going to be testing this live and I'll be doing updates if something new, interesting comes up. And of course, later on, I will have the deep dive video where we're going to go in and we're going to look at the code in more detail so I can explain how it's built, what it does, in case you want to make alterations to it yourself for your own purposes. So thanks a lot for watching, guys. If you like this video, remember to give a like, subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I'll see you guys in space.